Hello again there my good YouTubers. Um, welcome to another video, something that um, has been concerning a few people on YouTube. Um, the possible filtering of internet traffic by Virgin Media. Uh, I don't fully believe, I mean a lot of people saying they're putting things through proxies and things like that, I really don't believe that they are. In fact, a lot of things, if you look at what they're using and how they've got their things set up, uh, again that information is, is you know available, you can scan that across the net, uh, you'll find out that what they're actually doing is they're using certain Cisco uh, firewalls and a couple of other manufacturers' firewalls, which have a feature called Deep Packet Inspection, which uh, depending on certain rules that you apply to the firewalls and you apply to the particular processor of each packet that runs through the network interface, you can analyse what the packet is, where its destination is, what the actual packet is being transferred to wherever and so on and so forth. Uh, and yes, you can block it, you can tell it to drop it, you can even send, which is also very clever, uh, you can take the packet and then you can get the, let's say for instance the Cisco uh, box to then send a modified packet back as if that packet had came from the original connection that you were trying to send a packet to to get back and then they send a false packet back and it screws up whatever it is that you were connecting to so you end up with a false response. Uh, particularly, this is obviously a concern with file sharing, uh, torrents, this sort of thing, where you obviously want to share your files, you want to communicate, you know, and download, whether it be illegal content or whether it be legal content. Um, they can analyse the packet, look inside each individual packet, find out where it's destined, and depending on the rules that they set, uh, they can basically send a packet back to your torrent, whether it be uh, uTorrent or whatever it is that you're using, and it'll fail the checksum or they can send packets back to, you know, fail the download so that, you know, basically the torrent constantly fails. They can manipulate the packets with this new uh, security infrastructure they've put in. And to make it even worse, they've got this management system, which is run by a company, or designed and, and, and implemented by a company called Tufin, that's spelled T-U-F-I-N. And what it does is it collates every single Cisco firewall that's, that's deployed, whether it be deployed in Newcastle, or it be deployed in Birmingham, Manchester, London, wherever, they can get all of that information from all of those firewalls, whether it be Cisco, I think Juniper, or another one, you know, all the different manufacturers of firewalls that they use, there's three major ones they mainly use, they can gather all of that firewall information, they can consolidate it in one place on one screen, all with the use of this Tufin uh, web-based administration application system. That allows them to, from one screen, one computer terminal, be able to analyse packets, make and delete, remove, change rules. Uh, they can. That's how they're clamping down on Mac spoofing, which is where you take a somebody else's live Mac address, you clone it into another NTL or Virgin Media broadband modem, and then you go about 25 miles away from the place, so it connects to a different router. And uh, you, you know, that person can then gain uh, free internet access, or basically steal internet access from the person who's paying for the service. Uh, so you, that's that's how they're doing this. So what they're doing is, they, again, they can collate that firewall information. So therefore, they know that two MAC addresses on two different routers are existing. So therefore, they can actually end up booting the MAC because it's coming back to one machine. So they know that two MAC addresses are existent on the system at the same time and therefore it can reject it off the system and so on and so forth. That is what they're using. 
you know, so anybody who thinks, oh, they're putting it through a proxy, they're doing this, they're doing that, it's, it's not that old technology. This uh, the new deep packet inspection, which is implicated in uh, the modern firewalls that they're using now, which has been around for, you know, a good five, six years, um, has been adopted by Virgin Media. It's gone very big, and they're, they're, they're taking that as a, a big leap forward in being able to so-called deliver a better service to their customers on that one hand of, of, of Mac spoofing there's again you know with every you know hack there is you know the, an opposite and equal reaction but it doesn't mean that that's you know the end of, of, of that there's always going to be another hack and there's always going to be uh, another way of doing it in the case of deep packet inspection now this takes the piss because deep packet inspection if you're hacking or you're doing something illegal in the sense of trying to hack into a government database or trying to hack into any form of database whatever it is or somebody else's data which you do not have the right to access because it's somebody else's data the deep packet inspection in firewalls and security systems is a good idea what it seems that it's possible that Virgin Media is using this deep packet inspection for is again the torrent principle as I mentioned at the, the, the starting areas of this video which is basically to filter and stop certain illegal activities for such like uh, sharing music and sharing files like this. Now what concerns me with that is the fact that well that's a catch-22 scenario because your if you're not allowed to look into somebody else's information, what gives the internet service provider, Virgin Media, this god right to look into your private information? Well, even though it's illegal that you may be sharing, you know, files, but what about the non-illegal stuff? It's like, for instance, I sometimes download Slackware or Ubuntu uh, open source software through the torrent system because it's faster than the actual download server itself so on those grounds they're inspecting the in inside each individual packet that's going backwards and forwards via my torrent so that means that they're looking into my data and they're also looking into your data which it leaves a cache 22 if the general public are not allowed to look into somebody else's personal data what gives Virgin Media the right to look into your personal data it works both sides and has two sides of the coins they're a corporation they're not God you know they're not the EU they're not the government they're not the police they're a Virgin Media they're a corporation they're a service they're a company they do not have the right to look into your private data including that packet, deep packet inspection in the way that they've done that. So I believe that that should be made illegal on both sides and I don't know why that's doing. Now to find proof on this is to say you can look on the internet, you can do your own investigations but again it's a catch-22 scenario to find this information or whatever you kind of technically have to use hacks which are not illegal they're not illegal hacks, but you have to use certain hacks to, you know, investigate and find this information out. Um, so you won't be breaking the law by finding that information. But you, it, I don't know whether that sort of gathering of information would stand in court. Um, you would definitely prove to a judge in a British court that that is occurring, and you could catch them out to do that because this deep packet inspection is being used in that manner, which is definitely not proxies. So, and it, you know, just get the, the whole idea of sticking it through this old idea of, of, of proxy servers and, and whatever, which is very old technology. Um, it's, 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 as I say, it's got nothing to, nothing to do with that. It's old technology. Um, 
Which leads me on to a furthermore concern that I've got now. When any any single NTL modem that you have, uh, Carilla, like the NTL 250, I think they did the NTL 200, uh, they even had a 150 model, and the older model uh, modems, I think the most current one up to date, apart from this new hub, which is what I want to talk about, was the NTL 250. We've now moved, or they now want to put people on to the uh, Virgin Media. Uh, where is it? The uh, it's the hub. They're calling it a hub, which is an incorrect terminology because it's not. That's not what a hub is. It's basically a modem and a router strapped together in one box, running on one software. So that the modem and the firmware inside there is the router is at the same time as it is the modem. This gives them a uh, access point because they can pull your IP and they can access that router at any point in time which is basically, you know, remote administration, but they have a walk-in factor to that router, which is a big security risk, if you ask me, but it's Virgin Media. It's their modem, it's their service, and because it's their device, they can put anything they want in there. Again, this is, this is the concerning point, again, on this new modem that they've released, is that they may own the modem, they may own the software in the modem, they may own what's you know their hardware and their cables they do not own the data that is traveling across their devices that data is your data and it belongs to you and not saying that actual data is a particular item because I mean it's, it's basically just a load of zeros and ones a load of information it's just data but it's yours so whatever you send and receive through those devices that data belongs to you they do not have the right to view that. And this bill that was shoved through government very quickly last year prior to the Conservative government, which we now currently have, was ridiculous. Because according to form, and I don't know this, I've been trying to look for the bill and I'm having difficulty to find it. So anybody's got any you know way links and whatever, post them down below. But it pretty much allows them to look into your data but that data is yours so if they can look into your data does that bill also mean that we can look into their data because for every action there's an opposite and equal reaction and we have a, a constitution and a common law here in this country one law that makes all what is, 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 is the rules on that because I mean, if I could, you know, I can't find it or read this, this this bill. I mean, I'm sure it's out there somewhere. I've tried to have a look for it. Uh, but in all fairness, what's going on there, I think, is wrong. Um, they want to, they wanted me to upgrade to this new uh, modem, which is um, it's version three of the cable services uh, protocol. And they said, well, you can't get any bigger than 20 megabytes unless you upgrade to this, this new hub. And they want to charge me £30 activation fee to just start this hub. So they're going to give me the hub for free, but I need to pay a £30 activation fee, and that's the price of the hub. To be honest with you, the jumps from 20 to 30 meg and still have the same upload speed, really, or should we say marginal upload speed, it's still going to take a long time to upload a video to YouTube. And that's the crucial point. That really doesn't doesn't impress me. Um, so they can shoot up their arse. One of the major things that I need to point out, obviously, between this, this this factor of this modem is that when you run on the old 250 or the older style modems, you have a single RJ45 point point Ethernet connection that comes out the back of that modem. You can take a lead out of that and you can plug that into any security device you wish to, because that's your device. You can put it into a, a high-end Cisco firewall yourself if you want to. You can put it into a D-Link router. You can put it into a Netgear router. You can put it into a D-Link firewall. You can put it into a Netgear firewall. You can put it into any firewall that you wish to put your data that you're going to be traveling over that device into. So you can plug that into them. So you can pretty much block. I mean, obviously they've got access to the NTL 250 motor or whatever model it is. They've got access to that motor they can't necessarily gain further access to your data inside your network. If you take one of these 
you know, hubs they're calling it, which is not a hub, it's basically a modem built into a router. In, uh, they, they've got access to that router, they've also got access to your switch, they've got access to your internal network. Uh, there is, do you really trust them? As an individual, would you trust Virgin Media with access to your private network? I'm not saying that they would access that, and they would never admit it even if they did access that. But would you trust them? With it? And how would you turn it off? You can't. It's their software, their modem, you can't play with it, you can't modify it. You could end up with 15 years in jail if you try to modify their hardware. So, is it really a good idea? Now, yes, there is ways you could take that modem, and what you could do is you could turn off the wireless and the Wi-Fi and whatever, and you could just take the uh, one port out of the four ports off the back via the RJ45 cable, and you could stick that into, let's say, for instance, the same thing, the firewall and this, that, and the rest of it, to protect further internal network. You know, they still have access to that router, though. Uh, and it has been known, or I have found, or it has been known with me, in experience, they've actually turned it off because they've not been able to see anything connected at the other end. That's just because you decide to make it that secure that they can't see that anything's connected. So they turned it off and rang me up and I had to unplug every connection and plug it into the back of the computer. Which is quite simple because you don't have to do that, you just plug it into the back of an old laptop or whatever that you have sitting there and obviously there's a live computer, it comes back online and you plug it back in your router and they can't even see your data on the inside of the network. Anyway, so where there's a will, there's a way. But in all fairness, it seems that it's, it's wrong. So I, I, I don't want to take the option of upgrading. I'm quite happy with sticking with the current sort of service. And 20 megabytes is a, a perfectly satisfactory service you know, for that. If it becomes uh, too expensive, then I'll just cancel and, and, and find another provider. Um, the WiMAX wireless services are starting to roll out here in the UK. Uh, O2 which is uh, British Telecom, uh, they're rolling out a load of WiMAX services. Vodafone have jumped on the bandwagon, so we're going to see a lot more of the uh, WiMAX slash Wi-Fi services. Obviously BT are also offering an option at the moment where you take out a broadband package and in that broadband package you get X amount of minutes free included with the package, it's not free, it's obviously included with the package, they call it free, but it, it's included with your monthly fee package, I mean it's like 300 minutes, and that's via the WiMAX slash Wi-Fi mobile services, so you can be on the train and you know you're paying the one fee with your service provider for your internet at home, but you're also getting the ability to log in to a service provider uh, same service provider through the wireless networks which is quite an interesting option and I think that's a, you know I think, think BT's uh, definitely onto something with that one and that's you know it's quite a good one obviously Virgin Media are uh, as far as I know are not offering that they're obviously having to offer and they're pushing on the speed at the moment so and obviously with this idea of filtering, packet inspecting your traffic, your network traffic, it's not something that uh, I think is going to be a big hit, you know, in this next year for, for Virgin Media if, if they continue to do that. Um, what I want, what I'm thinking of doing is, is basically sending a letter to the EU because at the moment it looks like we're, uh, you know, here in the UK we're stuck with the EU. I don't think, uh, I don't think our government's going to give us our referendum. So maybe we can get the EU to work for us because, in the sense of privacy and humanity and, and humanitarianism and all the rest of it, and democracy especially, would probably do uh, the EU good to reverse this bill that's been pushed through government in regard to the uh, the internet and and, and, and then this, this this method of, of filtering so maybe we can use 
and get a good benefit from the European Union at this moment in time to help protect us against this, you know, inhumane big brother capitalistic Nazi type of move that's been made on this bill. So it's a concerning one. And these are some views obviously that I've got and obviously a little bit of information, technical information in regard to the modems and uh, what's happening with them really so but yeah anyway my good YouTubers stay safe thanks for watching sorry this is a bit long video or whatever but it's quite a bit of information then there's still a lot more information really but in brief that's pretty much what, what's happening so anyway my good YouTubers take it easy I'll speak to you soon and stay safe thanks a lot